Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. The GP3 series came to an end after the 2018 championship, but what happened to the drivers who took part in that final series? Did these young single-seater drivers fulfil their dreams and make it to Formula 1, or are they now working down their local car wash? Well, let's go through every driver and see what happened to them in the last four years. What happened to the drivers of the 2018 GP3 series? Make sure you subscribe and let's begin. Jehan Daruvala. The Indian made his only two appearances in GP3 with MP Motorsport at the final two races of the season. So he is classified last of the 26 drivers. He only managed a best 13th place, but in the years since has impressed with Prema and Carlin in both Formula 3 and Formula 2, still has the potential to get a Formula 1 drive. Will Palmer. The son of former Formula 1 driver Jonathan Palmer and brother to Formula 1 flop Jolien Palmer, Will Palmer never made that step up. He was British Formula 4 champion in 2015 but only made two appearances at the opening round in GP3 again with MP Motorsport. This was his last major racing appearance, retiring from racing to concentrate on his studies. Don't know what he's up to these days but at least he wasn't mocked relentlessly like Jolien was. Sasha Fenestraz I feel like Sasha Fenestras has been around forever, he's still only 23. He made four appearances with Arden at the end of 2018 and in the years since has moved to Japan, winning the Japanese Formula 3 series and finishing runner-up in the Super Formula series in 2022. He's raced in Super GT as well and in 2023 he will be racing in Formula E for Nissan and he is a driver who is starting to make a name for himself. Christian Lundgaard Another driver who made a couple of appearances for MP Motorsport in 2018 was Christian Lundgaard. The Danish driver has since been competitive in both Formula 3 and Formula 2, winning a couple of races in the latter. He has since moved on to IndyCar with Ray Howe Letterman Racing and performed decently in his first season, getting a podium at Indianapolis and winning Rookie of the Year. If he sticks with it, he has all the potential to be an IndyCar champion one day. Julian Falchero the Frenchman had a couple of seasons in GP3. In 2017, he was with Campos and scored points here and there before a pointless season with Arden in 2018. His racing career really slipped after that, racing in a variety of series on part-time deals, most recently the European Le Mans series in 2021. Devlin Di Francesco. The 2017 Spanish Formula 3 champion never found much success in Europe. After struggling in GP3 in 2018, he would struggle with Trident in Formula 3 in 2019 finishing 25th overall with no points. In 2020, he went back to America and finished a runner-up in the Indy Pro 2000 series before a mediocre season in Indy Lights, which was enough to get him a drive in IndyCar for 2022 with Andretti Steinbrenner Autosport. It wasn't a great first season with a best finish of 12th, but it was enough to confirm a second season with the team in 2023. Hopefully some better results come his way. Jan's fit. Finishing the season off for Genza but didn't score any points, this marked the end of Jans Fitz's single-seater career. The German has never won a race in any series, spending a season in the German Porsche Carrera Cup and since 2020 in the ADAC GT Masters. He's never finished higher than 17th in that championship and even though he's only 23, it's only downhill from here. Diego Menchaca the Mexican has never really done anything of note. He has a single race win in the British Formula 4 Championship back in 2014, and since his brief time in GP3, he has raced GTs in various categories. In 2022, he's racing an Audi in the GT World Challenge Europe Endurance Cup, where he's not really done anything of note either. The story of his career. Gabriel Aubrey. I had high hopes for Gabriel Aubrey at one point, but the 2018 GP3 series was his final in single-seaters. The year with Arden was tough and Aubrey only scored 5 points. He has since moved sideways to endurance racing and he has had some mild success. Second in the World Endurance Championship with Jackie Chan Racing in the LMP2 class back in 2019 as well as second place in class at Le Mans that same year. In 2022 he raced for Spirit of Racing in the GT class of the World Endurance and Team Virage in the European Le Mans Series LMP2 class. But it hasn't been a great year for Gabriel Aubrey, way down the field no wins. Aubrey is better than this and hopefully with a flood of hypercars in 2023, he can get a top drive. Nico Kari The Finn was a race winner with Arden in GP3 in 2017, but a move to MP Motorsport for 2018 was a bad move, 
and it was a tough year. Even so, Curry got moved up to Formula 2 Series for a couple of races before heading back down to Formula 3 with Trident. He was a midfield runner and didn't really excel, and his career has kind of just stopped. He had a few endurance races up to 2020 and returned for a couple of Formula 3 races this year, but it looks like Nico Curry is done as a full-time race driver. Tatiana Calderon The only woman on this list, Tatiana Calderon is a mystery to me. She has never had success at any level or even shown the minimum of talent and yet keeps getting drives in high profile series. This was her third season of GP3 and she's never done anything of note. And yet she was a Sauber Formula 1 test driver at the same time. In 2019 she was in Formula 2 with Arden and did nothing. She has also raced in Super Formula and IndyCar and various other series and still hasn't done anything of note. Richard Vashore I really like the young Dutchman, I really want him to succeed, I think he's a very good driver. In 2018 he had just come off the back of a successful Toyota Racing Series campaign where he took 6 wins and finished 2nd in the championship, only 5 points off Robert Schwartzman. He did half the GP3 season of MP Motorsport because we're Dutch and so is he and he scored points at least. In the years since he has won a couple of Formula 2 races and is a decent midfield runner, I don't see him progressing to Formula 1 but I think he'll be okay. Simo Laksanen Even before racing in GP3 with Campos, Simo Laksanen had never really accomplished much. A win in both the French and German F4 series, but never a title contender. There was nothing remarkable about his time in GP3, but he did get a podium at the final race. In 2019 he raced in Formula 3 but struggled down the back end of the field, and he retired from racing after 2019 and was working for Pemamac as a production engineer and is apparently a student at university. It looks like he has left racing behind. Jerry Mawson, the dominant force in the S5000 series in Australia, his humble beginnings in Europe were more disappointing. He won the ADAC Formula 4 Championship in 2016 but struggled for results in the years after. A year with Van Amersfoort's racing in Formula 3 European and Arden in GP3 in 2018, which did at least see a couple of podiums. Mawson would spend a couple of years racing Porsches in various series before heading back to Australia for the S5000 series where he has won both championships that have actually happened, so from GP3 to the GOAT of S5000 in just four years. Juan Manuel Correa We all know what happened to Juan Manuel Correa. Despite taking no wins or podiums in 2018 for Genza, Correa was a test driver in Formula 1 and graduated to Formula 2 for 2019. Then the Spa accident happened. Correa was severely injured and didn't race for two years. In 2021 he returned to Formula 3 with ART and in 2022 he even got a podium as well as a race win with Prima in the European Le Mans series. Hopefully things are starting to come back together for one Manuel Correa. Alessio Lorandi I completely forgot Lorandi ever existed. He was a race winner in European Formula 3 and even in GP3 in 2017. He only raced part time in 2018 before moving up to Formula 2 to finish the year with Trident scoring a couple of points. He raced in the 2019 Macau GP and did a few GT races in 2020 and then called time on his career. His brother Leonardo was also a race driver and also quit racing at pretty much the same time. Maybe the Lorandi brothers are better at something that doesn't involve driving really fast. Dorian Boccalacci The first race winner on this list, Dorian Boccalacci won his final GP3 race before getting a Formula 2 drive. It was all downhill from here. Racing for MP, Trident and Campos, Dorian Boccalacci felt to impress and ended up in various GT series such as the Porsche Super Cup and Lamborghini Super Trofeo. He has been a race winner and even finished runner-up in the 2021 and 2022 Porsche Carrera Cup in France, losing out both times to Marvin Klein. In 2022, Boccalacci finished 7th in the Porsche Super Cup behind Marvin Klein. I recommend maybe finding a way to overtake Klein, otherwise you're never going to win anything. Ryan Vetter Another driver who is no longer racing, Ryan Vetter had a decent GP3 season in 2018 with Trident, his second in the series. He got five podiums in two years and finished inside the top 10 both years. But after competing in just two Formula 2 races in 2019, he wrapped his racing career and started the Veloce Esports company, which has taken off very successfully. Jake Hughes, a race winner in multiple categories. It feels like Jake Hughes has been around forever. He is the living Hello fellow kids meme in the Formula 2 paddock. He won the 2013 British F4 Championship and won races in Formula Renault before his first go at GP3 with Dams in 2016 where he won races. In 2017 he raced in Formula 3 European and won a race. 
before doing the 2018 GP3 season with ART, taking another race win. He has been a regular in Formula 3 and Formula 2 since. He has scored race wins in Formula 3, but has never hit that level in Formula 2. But he is also employed as a simulator driver for the Mercedes Formula 1 team and a reserve driver in Formula E. His 2022 F2 campaign with Van Amersfoort has not been great, but at least he has other work. Giuliano Alesi, the son of former Formula 1 race winner Gene Alesi, 2018 was his third season in GP3 with Trident. He took four wins in the series in total and got a drive in Formula 2 off the back of it. He struggled for points over the next couple of years with Trident and then ART. In 2021, he headed for Japan and almost won the Super Lights Championship as well as taking his first win in Super Formula in just his second start. 2022 was his first full Super Formula campaign and it wasn't great, whilst also racing in the Super GT Championship. Pedro Piquet Another son of a former Formula 1 driver, Pedro Piquet is the son of three-time champion Nelson Piquet. He came to Europe in 2016 after dominating in Brazil and spent two years with Van Amersfoort Racing in Formula 3 European. It was rough going. In 2018, he signed with Trident in GP3, took a win and finished sixth overall. He stayed with Trident in Formula 3 for 2019 and performed well, but a move to Chirouz in 2020 in Formula 2 saw him drop to the back of the field and nearly ended his career with financial issues. He returned in 2022 in the Brazilian stock car series as a guest driver, but his career very sadly may be done before it got started. David Beckman The German started the year with Genza, but after poor results he switched to Trident and finished the year with championship winning form. Three wins propelled him to fifth overall, and it is his most successful season in racing to date. He had a couple of decent seasons in Formula 3, taking a couple of wins in 2020, but a step up to Formula 2 has not been as successful for Beckman. He scored points, but he has just been a midfield driver at best. Leonardo Pulcini, the 2016 Euro Formula champion, jumped into this series in 2017, but had his best year in 2018, taking a couple of wins for Campos and finishing fourth overall. He never matched that level in Formula 3, taking a win in 2019, before failing to score a full-time drive in 2020. He has since moved to GT and been very successful, winning the Lamborghini Super Trophy of Europe in 2021 and the 2022 International GT Open also in a Lamborghini. He is someone who can make a name for himself in something like World Endurance or maybe even a jump to the DTM series. Callum Eilat Someone who has had a lot of promise and yet you rarely see the best of him, Callum Eilat was third in 2018 for ART and took a couple of wins. In the year since, he's been a top contender in Formula 2, finishing runner-up in 2020 behind Mick Schumacher. He competed at Le Mans in 2021, as well as making his IndyCar debut, and took his first full season in America in 2022 with Junko's Hollinger. Definitely a learning year, finishing 20th overall, but he is also a test driver for Ferrari and Alfa Romeo, and deserving of an opportunity in Formula 1. Nikita Mazepin the only driver on this list to make it into Formula 1, which is really sad when you think about it. The Formula 1 flop was saved from another year of spinning, crashing and finishing last by the war in Ukraine. Despite failing in Formula 1, he was a race winner and championship runner-up in GP3, and even won races in Formula 2. He couldn't convert back to Formula 1. His single season with Haas was a disaster, he scored no points and struggled to make it to the end of races. Spinning, very often. He's currently in the wilderness as his dad has links to Putin, so finding a race seat is near impossible for the Russian. Antoine Hubert. And finally the champion of 2018, we sadly all know what happened to Antoine Hubert. After winning the GP3 championship, he was the obvious choice for the Formula 2, and he was a competitive driver, taking a couple of wins. He was killed at the tragic events at Spa, but also injured Juan Manuel Correa. Had he not died, I'm sure he would be a Formula 1 driver in 2023. I can see him in an Alpine seat, but we will never get to find out. Hubert was just 22 years old when he died and is very much missed. So that is the 26 drivers who competed in the 2018 GP3 series and what they are doing now. A very depressing end to the video, but it is interesting to see what happened to all these young drivers and almost shocking only one has ended up in Formula 1. Leave your thoughts in the comments below, remember to subscribe, thank you for watching and have a good one.